Good morning. Good morning. Today is 1 March, the year 2007. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in California. Part of our mission is to record and preserve the history of our country's military conflicts, especially World War II. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in those conflicts. Today, I'm here at the museum along with special guest, Carol Perez. And today, we have the honor and the privilege of interviewing Captain Van Gritten. Captain uh, Gritten was a mortar pool dispatcher in the Air Force in Italy during World War II and an artillery officer with the Army in Korea during that conflict. So we're going to talk to him about that and a lot of other things. Van, nice to have you here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that, okay. That, yeah, that's fine. Now, first of all, uh, would you uh, state your full name and uh, spell your last name for us, please? Vanis Virgil Gritton. G-R-I-T-T-E-N. And when and where were you born? I was born in Spencer, Iowa, January 4th, 1922. 1922. So that makes you about? Now it makes me about 85. About 85. Well, I mean, a little over 85. A little over 85. Well, you look great. Thank you. Um, Spencer, Iowa. Now, how big is t the town was that, and where is it? Where? Uh, it's the northwest corner of Iowa. There's lakes around it, Lake Okaloobo, June Spirit Lake, and uh, Trumbull Lake, a whole bunch of lakes around it. And it's uh, about 100 miles north east of Sioux City, okay. and uh, about uh, 40 miles south of the uh, Minnesota border. Uh, it's pretty cold there in the winter time, I would think. I've 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 seen it as high high as or low, I guess, low as forty be, uh, thirty below zero. <laughs> uh, uh, would you want me to tell you a little bit about that? Just about a, yes, please. One time when I, we were kids, we went to our neighbors. We walked down to our neighbors, and it was snow on the ground. I was just walking the snow, you know, crunch, crunch, crunch. You know how it is. And uh, we were going down there. The folks would play cards, and we'd pop popcorn and stuff like that. We got down there, and they went and looked at the temperature, and it says 30 below zero. My mother says, we better get home. We'll freeze to death. Dad says, we got down here, didn't we? We were running back, back and forth, uh, back and forth, running back and forth physically uh, with the family. So anyway, that's, what, that's, the, that's the coldest <laughs> I've ever seen. But there wasn't a bit of wind. Oh, no yeah. wind, so mm -hmm. it, it was we it had fun. Yeah. We never went home. <laughs> um, and your father, what was his name? Virgil, George Virgil Gritton. And uh, what did he do? He was a farmer. So you lived on a farm? I What's lived it? on a farm till I went in service. And how large was your farm? We had farm 100, 160 acres, and we had, these were all rental. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we had, uh, 80 acres, which my grandfather had owned before that, and then we had a, a 120 acres down in another town mm -hmm. that was south of Spencer. But uh, Spencer was my, the county seat of, of our state. There's 99 counties in our state. And what did you raise on the farm? At that time, at that time it was um, old cattle and uh, and uh, pigs mm -hmm. and. Uh, the grain was oats, barley, uh, uh, hay, corn, mm -hmm. and and beans at the at Soy last. Beans, yeah. Soy beans. Uh, but now it's just corn and beans, corn and beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, did you have dairy cattle too? We had a few just for our own just self, for, milk, yeah. for our own milk and. Yeah. And your ancestors on your dad's side, uh, where did they come from, from the old country, or, or and how did they end up in Iowa? Uh, they were, all of them were, uh, they come to Iowa after they come from Texas. They were down in Texas for a year and they got froze out, they said. <laughs> and, but they were originally from Illinois and Indiana. Oh, well, they were? Yeah. Hmm. Do you don't know, do you know where in Indiana? 
Indiana, Covington, Indiana. Covington, okay. That's about 100 miles south of Chicago. Right. Uh, I'm from yeah. Evansville, Indiana, oh, yeah. so I kind of know, know that area. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But, um, and then uh, did they come from, where did they come from in Europe, or do you know? Well, ancestors? I can't say for sure, but I, this is going to be third-handed. But I can account for about five different generations counting, counting uh, uh -huh. not counting me, but counting my kids. Right. But uh, I thought we were Dutch and German ancestry. But I went back to Indiana and my second or third cousin, he informed me that, no, we're not Dutch and German, we are English. Uh -huh. I'd like to look, make a comment on English, but I better not do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, well, I says, I'm not an Englishman, I know what an Englishman is. You know what an Englishman is, don't you? You tell them a joke, and they don't catch on to it to a couple of days later, then they'll laugh. <laughs> and I'm not that way, I can catch on to a joke fast. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, I don't know, yeah. my... my on my mother's side, their, her maiden name was D. Frain, capital D E, capital F R A I N. So I thought that was <clears throat> maybe Dutch and French and a, 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 a little, little, little German or something like that. But I thought Grit, and that's something more like a, uh, a, a German name. Yeah. So that's why I got the idea. When they said French, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I and mean, when well, they said English. Yeah, on your mother's, what was your mother's name then? Her, 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 Grace Edna D. Dufresne. Dufresne. And how do you spell that, Dufresne? Capital D-E, capital F-R-A-I-N. Okay. And uh, where did your father meet her? Oh, he met her in Iowa. Okay. When they moved to Illinois, he met her in high school or something in Iowa. In Iowa. She went to Penn's College for a couple years. Uh -huh. and, and what did her father do? Her father was a farmer. A farmer also. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, and did you trace back her ancestry? Where did you figure out where the, uh, they had all come from? No, well, uh, they were Pennsylvania Dutchmen. Oh, okay. They're, we belonged to uh, Quaker Church, uh -huh. and uh, but they never, I, I didn't know anything else about them. Yeah. Then some of them moved up to uh, in southern uh, Minnesota and the rest of them around there. Okay. Um, did you go to church much when you were a kid, your family? Every every time we got there. I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty Christian boy. And was it a Quaker church that you went to then? Yes, that's out in Iowa. Yes, okay. but then when I come to California, it's it's a different story. Okay, well we can we'll get to that later yeah. when you get to California then. Um, and did you have any brothers and sisters? I had three, one, two, two brothers and one sister. And what were their names? My sister, she was 18 months younger than me. Her name is Beverly Jean Gritton. Now her name is Culver. That's her, maid, that's her uh, married name. Where did she live? She lived in Emmitsburg, Iowa. That was the county seat, the county east of Spencer. Okay. She still lives there okay. to this day. Uh, I have one brother that lives in Ontario, California, and I have... Uh, one bro brother that lived in Odeboat, Iowa. That's about uh, 75 miles from Des Moines, west of Des Moines. And were they older or younger than you, your brothers? I was the oldest. You were the oldest, okay. And what are your brother's names? Um, my brother, one brother that's the youngest, uh, he's 18 years younger than me, that lives in Odeboat. His name is Gary. I don't know his last, what's his middle name, Gary? That's all right. First thing. Gary Gritton. And my sister's name is Beverly, Beverly, uh, Beverly Gritton. And my other brother was uh, Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Lawrence, and he lives in Ontario. Okay. okay. Um, um, now, you grew up during the Depression, but I'm assuming since you had a farm, you still had plenty to eat. But we, was it still kind of tough for never, you guys? For a while there, we had tomato soup one night and potato soup the next. But we never went hungry. We had cows, we had chickens, we had a always had a big garden. We always took food and stuff from our garden into grandparents and, and out of uh, Greenville, uh, Greenville, Iowa. It's a little small town, 97, 96 population. Yeah. I moved out of it. <laughs> but anyway, no, we never, we never heard about it. Now we had, 
I can remember one time about the Depression, though, my dad took a load with his horses of corn, ear corn, and it's in a box about oh, three foot wide and three foot tall, and uh, I forget exactly how many bushels they hold. He backed it into this oil station and dumped it out in the, in the oil station because he owed the man, owed man, the man five dollars for gas. So he, the guy said, well, I'll burn it, that'll be good. So that's, that was the only bad depression, but, uh, but we couldn't get, we couldn't get hardly anything for it to sell because uh, nobody had any money. Right. Yeah. So a lot of trading bargain yeah, went around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I imagine that you had a lot of chores on the farm. Uh, tell us about those. Oh, yes. I, I milked cows when I was oh, junior high. We had, we didn't have but, oh, four or five cows a day. Now, my uncle, he, he was. Uh, he was my dad's brother, his only brother. He he milked uh, ten or twelve cows, mm -hmm. but uh, we never did that much. We, we fed pigs and uh, and a, maybe a few cattle, very few cattle. Yeah. What kind of pigs did you have? Hampshire, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that was the main one we had. They're white, I believe. No, black and white. Black and white. Black yeah, and white. Black and white. Yeah, they had a stri big stripe down the yeah. middle of them. Yeah. yeah. We had spotted pull in China. Yes, we had, we had spotted pull in China too. Yeah. And Durax and yeah. oh guys. Durax or red ones. Red ones. <laughs> yeah. Very few of those we had. But. Uh -huh. um, so what did you guys do for fun when you were a kid? Well, Friday morning, Dad would say, "Okay, boys, when you get home, hurry up home from school. This is Friday night. We're going fishing, and all these lakes around here." Mm -hmm. And uh, so. I was the oldest. Dad had two rods and reels, Shakespeare rods and reels. And so we'd go fishing. And uh, Mom would fix a lunch for us or fix a dinner, uh, mm -hmm. a supper, or whatever you want to say at that, at that time. Right. Supper, and then the whole family would go. Mm -hmm. Of course, my, my younger brother, that was 18, 18 years younger, he didn't come along for a while. But that was our main deal, or go down to the neighbors, or it was Saturday night, they always went to town. We had to go to Spencer's to town, do our grocery shopping. My dad would give my mother three dollars to buy her staple items. Everything else we had, we could raise on the farm. On our big garden, we probably had a half acre of garden, and uh, the milk cows and the chickens. We had a lot of chickens. Getting to the chickens, we one one time he brought home five hundred chickens. Now this was in probably January or February. Day old chickens, and they always give you 10% more uh, chickens because they're going to some of them die. We had a two story house, and he put them up in a, a bedroom upstairs. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so, and then and when they got to be about three or four weeks, then he had a, a, a chicken house that he could uh, put them in, a, a brooder house. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> but that was, that was, yeah. so we had a, we had a, a good life out there. How far out, out of, outside of town did you? Uh, we're for six miles, but went to. I went to school in Greenville. That's ten miles south of Spencer. Oh, okay. But I was born in, in, in Spencer. Greenville uh, was. You, what what kind of fish would you catch in those lakes? Our main one was bullheads, catfish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we just fish off the shore. Yeah. Would two, put two flares down. And oh, you be, fish at night. Fish yeah. at night. Oh, yeah, after I school, see. you know, yeah, after school right. is out. Oh, okay, yeah. Were there any rivers around there? There was. Uh, what was the name of that river? There's one river went right through the Spencer uh, Des Moines River, I think mm -hmm. it was. Something Did like you have any creeks on your farm? No. Okay. Uh, no, ours was all flat. No hills. No nothing. Yeah. Uh, Did you do any hunting? Yes. My grandfather gave my dad a 12 gauge shotgun. 12 gauge pump shotgun. My dad gave it to me. The only thing I ever shot was that with two quail or prairie chickens or whatever. You want. I, well, I get them mixed up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and dad was in town and I took the gun and I went out. Dad would give it to me. And I, I was in junior high then. I wasn't in high school yet. And of course, I'd go up and down the corn rows and then the pheasants would fly up. Pheasants season was on. They'd fly up. But uh, and the quail stuff. I brought home three quail or prairie chickens, whatever. And when I got home, I, Dad says, "Who got them for you?" 
I said, well, I shot him myself. He said, you did not. I said, I did too. Dad never did too much shooting. He'd go skeet shooting. Mm -hmm. And on Thanksgiving, he'd go out and he'd, he could get turkey a turkey, shoot. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, that's about all. I still have that old shotgun. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I give it to my nephew. He's my one of my boys. Yeah. Sons. Oh, great. But uh, yeah. that's about all that's of hunting. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I took, when I went to Korea, Korea, no, when I went to Japan, I took my shotgun with me, but I never got a shot off. <laughs> they never had any ducks or they never had anything, so. Yeah. But I, I never was a duck hunter. Yeah. I think I've been out a couple of them, but never, yeah. never got him. Um, so you went to, where'd you go to grammar school, to grade school? I went to uh, grade school uh, in Greenville till the fifth grade, and then we moved out to the farm, my grandmother's 80 acres. Now that was four miles but I had to go to school in a country school. There were just eight of us kids in the whole school. No. And there was about three grades that had two kids in, and the rest of them were all single. And eight kids, now you figure, in this whole one room, pop belly stove over here, for fun we would go out and throw the ball over the, tea, over the schoolhouse, and if you caught it, you, go, you can run around and hit somebody with the ball. Oh. <laughs> that was the main deal. And the summertime, or the wintertime, I mean, We'd uh, throw snowballs at each other. But we had a pony that we rode to, uh, Bonnie was her name. She was a little black and white uh, Shetland pony, 36 inches tall, yeah. 315 pounds. I remember that. So in the summertime, I never wore shoes. I was always barefooted. She would step on my <laughs> toes. Bonnie, get off my toes. <laughs> get off my toes. But uh, that was, then, to go into high school, we had to walk back this toward Greenville, about a quarter of a mile, and we caught a bus there and went on in and through high school. Uh, I was there. And uh, <coughs> did you play any sports in high school? All all sports, everything we had. We didn't have but uh, we didn't have football because we couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So we had. Um, uh, baseball, and basketball. Basketball is my favorite. I'm short, yeah. Yeah. but I love basketball. Uh -huh. I still do. The yeah. Lakers, I love them. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, did you uh, did you have a, a goal hoop put up uh, on, on the farm? Did, I mean, could, no, I did. Didn't, didn't no, we anything? didn't. I didn't have time to do that because when <coughs> I when I come home from school, I had to change my clothes. We always had a pair of dirty clothes. Change my clothes. Take my uh, school clothes off. And go out and do my chores. What would you wear to school normally? Oh, jeans, jeans, jeans. Gen and jeans, but they were the cleanest ones. See. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I had I had better uh, uh, clothes when I go to church or Sunday school. Right. Yeah, we had our Sunday school clothes. We call them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, in basketball, there wasn't a lot of scoring then, was there? Were well, they pretty low scoring games? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Uh, our basketball floor was only 13 feet high, <laughs> seven, uh, 13 feet high, because the basket's 10 feet high. So right. You just about have to shoot it and pull a string and drop it in, see? <laughs> but we never played a game. We just scrimmaged on that floor. Mm -hmm. It was all cement, all the way around. I fell down on like cement. <laughs> but uh, so the girls, when they had to get to the gym, they would come in another door down from the other side, and we'd go to this other side. We had our showers, and they had their showers. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I love basketball and then baseball. Baseball was good. We had, oh, I can't remember the, the guy that, uh, our coach. Our coach was a superintendent mm -hmm. and he taught this one baseball player. He knew he was a prominent uh, baseball player. I, if somebody would say his name, I'd know it, but I, I don't know it now. But, but he was a pitcher. I think oh. he was a pitcher. Uh -huh. And he would teach our, our pitchers how to pitch, like him. Mm. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I got to play, my, my favorite was uh, uh, catcher. Oh, I liked to be catcher. Yes, and then yeah. I played, well, first I started out in the field. Of course, they shepherd you out in the field. Yeah. Then I come into second base, then I came into catcher. Mm -hmm. But I never was a pitcher. Yeah. I never. Well, the catcher is, I mean, you're in every, the catcher, it's always something going on. That's you're right. Every play. That, you that's what I like. You don't get bored. I, I wasn't too good in throwing it to second, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but I, I, I do it, but uh, I, I, can, I can know the plays. I yeah. know the plays we had. And, uh, right. 
and the, the pitchers, the coach he taught the pitchers good yeah. common sense. Yeah. But and um, let's see now, what year would you have graduated from high school? I graduated in, in, in 1945, 1940. 1940, yes, that's right. Yeah. Then after that, I went to junior college in Emmitsburg, where my sister lives now, mm -hmm. for two years. Mm -hmm. Then I got out of there. Then I, I decided I wanted to join the service. Okay, that let was me, 42. Let me, yeah, let me uh, go back, though. Do you remember what you were doing on December 7th? I was going to school. Uh -huh. Do you remember that day or when you first heard about the Japanese? Yes, attack? I did. I was eating at a table where... Um, where we, we ate our, our I, I stayed with these people for a long time. In fact, he was a chemistry teacher, oh. and him, his, him and his wife rented out a couple of room to us. And, but they fed us too. Mm -hmm. So when we come home for lunch, he told us he heard it over the radio, mm -hmm. and we felt bad about that. Yeah, had you were you up on current affairs? Could you see that we might be going to war before not, long? Not, not, nothing not before, before nothing. Not before that. Um, did you have a girlfriend or anything in high school or in college when you uh, up to this uh, point? No, not till that. Not till after I got got in service. Okay. I never had anybody. I so, went. Yeah. So I had a sister around, but I never. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, so uh, how? When did you join the service then? Okay, after I got out of. Um, it was 42, I got out of June, 42, I got out of high school. No, out of college. Uh, college. Out of, you, you junior you college. JC, yeah. And so I decided to join then. So that was, uh, I went down and tried, and they said, can't, we can't, can't I, we can't get you in. Were you, were you wanting to join the Air Force at that time? I wanted to join anything that flew a plane. Okay, well, had you been interested but, in aviation prior to uh, this? Well, I, I wasn't. But I, I've seen a few in the movies and stuff, mm -hmm. and that's uh, I never never seen one fl fly. We ended up with P forty sevens, pursuit plane like we have out here. I just lo I said this is mine. This is my, <laughs> but uh, that's another story. Well, my uh, my uh, my father uh, in Evansville, Republic Aviation had a plant there, and yeah. he was a welder and was a welder on the, oh, and yeah. he act and this P forty seven was built in Evansville, so he might have. Worked, uh, been a welder on this very plane that we have here. Do you know the one that owned, that flew this one? Out here? I don't know his name. Or I don't well, know. Well, that's the, a guy who just passed away a couple of years ago. Really, I understand. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I'll be and his his wife is on the, on there. They said they had when they painted it, they had to dollar up a little bit because she yeah. <laughs> didn't have too much on at the time. Oh, I see. I, yeah, I seen I'll that the other day when I was yeah, out here. Yeah, oh, I'll be there. Um, well, I meant to ask you, uh, backtrack a little bit on the farm. Did you have a tractor on the farm, or did for, you use for, mules or horses? For a while we did, but I, I did most of the farming uh, in, a, in a grade school, junior high, and two horses. We had two horses, one row. We did mostly corn and beans. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Dad would plant everything. He'd get the ground ready and plant it, and then I'd wait till it gets up, and then I'd... There were single rows at that time. They didn't right. drill. They didn't drill a... Uh, in like they do now, they drill them every foot or so, right, uh, right down through that. But <clears throat> I would take these two horses, and I'd harness them and all. That's when I was junior high, and I'd cultivate. Now I was always a great one to uh, know how long it was going to take to uh, go around, make around how many rounds I can make before I have to go in and eat lunch. See? Oh, uh -huh. I always liked that. I, I was a I was a, I was a computer, <laughs> I might well say, but, yeah. but anyway, we went, uh, I would do that, and, uh, and all you do is you corn three times, and then it's laid away. You don't have to do any more until you mm -hmm. harvest. Yeah. But now it's big machines, oh, yeah. and oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. Com combines, and go corn and beans, corn and beans. But, uh, I mean, uh, did, did you pick the corn by hand? Yes. I didn't myself. Uh, I know my when I was going to uh, college, my cousin came out. He wasn't going to college, so he helped my dad pick. Yeah, but, yeah uh, we did. We had I had, we had about forty acres in yeah. Indiana, and uh, we I we, we had a tractor yeah. and a little trailer on behind, and one would drive the tractor, and 
my mother, my dad, and I would be the ones that would pick the corn. And one of us would get to drive because I always liked to drive. If yeah. I could, but it didn't always. Yeah, you know, and you'd, you'd pick the corn and you would uh, you shuck it and throw it in the trailer. Yeah. You know? well, and you yeah. got to pretty fast. You got to be pretty fast at it uh, after a well, while when you did enough of it. I helped a little bit, but it just, we had horses with the same kind of a box that so we took. Right. Uh, uh, and they would just walk along and then just pick it up. And, were there mills around? Did you go have your uh, uh, corn and stuff made into feed for the cattle? For well, we uh, stuff, no, we kept, we stuff. fed everything that we grew. Yeah. We weren't being our our at, on the eighty acres that uh, we did most of the, had most of the time. We had twenty five acres of corn, twenty five acres of oats, and twenty five acres of hay, and we fed that hay to the. The, the, they threshed, always threshed, put them in bundles and threshed, mm -hmm. uh, threshed the oats to get get that out. But we fed most of that. We had quite a few chickens, so we fed oats mm -hmm. and stuff to chickens and cows. But you didn't, you didn't have it ground up in, into no. meal or anything. No, like no, that. no. Yeah, no. we did. Oh, okay, I was wondering about no, that. No, we never, just ate it. Just we never had that many animals. Probably pigs would have twenty five mm -hmm. at a time uh, at one season. Yeah. And you can have a, a spring season or a fall season, mm -hmm. and. Uh, would you uh, slaughter your own uh, pigs and stuff, or? Uh, no, it's a, this, is a, this is another little story. My my mother called my dad a uh, road farmer. She says he farms going to the road, <laughs> <laughs> but he'd take a pig when it was two hundred and fifty pounds. That's ready. That's when you're supposed to should. That's the best time when there's not too much fat and still. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good size. He'd take that in his trailer with his car, and take it to town and sell it. Well, I shouldn't say this about poor old dad, but uh, then this is where the three dollars come from. He give her for. Oh, right. He was he would gamble away most of it, <laughs> and I didn't yeah. believe in gambling. I, I was a tightwad little boy. Well, I never got very much. Going through high, going through junior high, I got a quarter. My allowance was quarter uh, quarter on a Saturday. We'd go go to go to town on Saturday night, do the grocery shopping. I'd get to go to the movie, mm -hmm. and uh, when I got in high school, then I had I got up to a dollar, uh, uh, and but then we had a tractor when I got up in high school, and uh, uh, I could fill my car, fill the car up with Dad's gas. Of course, that that was free, so then I could go to the movie for a dime, mm -hmm. eat, my girlfriend and I, and maybe a popcorn. For a nickel, mm -hmm. maybe get a, maybe give it a hamburger for a nickel when you got out, and just little things like that. And but now here's the one to catch on that though. One time I forgot to put gas in the car. Okay, well, make a long story short, I took my girlfriend home after the movie, and I looked at the gas gauge and it's right to empty, and I had about eight miles to home. I was northwest of. Uh, uh, Spencer. So I went. So I went to this oil station, and I had a dime in my pocket. Gasoline was sixteen cents a gallon then. So I went up to this gas station man. I says, "I want a dime's worth." He just shook his head like this. He says, "You know, you guys, you guys get your gas out. of What'd you do? Forget some, put gas in your car?" Yes. He says, "You get it out of your dad's tractor t t t t barrel," and. So, but I got home. It just equaled out. I got home. <laughs> but, That's right. What kind of tractor did you have on the farm? Your first tractor. We had a. Uh, at first, we had a Ford. Mm -hmm. Ford Ford's a tractor, I guess. Ford Ferguson. But the, had, yeah. no, it wasn't a Ferguson. It was it's it, it older than that. It was about a twenty-eight, oh. two or three model. I have a friend in Morongo that's got uh, got one almost like it. He's yeah. trying to recuperate it, but I don't think he. Will. We had a but then one. then we had international. Uh, Farm malls. Farm malls. I read ones. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we had John Deere. Then we had the Oliver's tractor. Mm -hmm. My awesome. uncle was a farmer. He he would do three hundred. He had. He rented a half section. He never did buy that half section. He bought other mm -hmm. ground. Yeah. But every time he built a building on it, he'd make a contract that that was his building. Mm -hmm. But uh, he rented it. But that was nothing but. Uh, his farm was nothing but cockleburrs. 
you know what cockroaches are? Mm, no, weed, yeah. it's bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he had, well, after he lived in it for maybe 10 years, that farm was number one in Clay County. Because it was, we always, we was on the hands and knees. I got to work on that, pulling them cockroaches out <laughs> of the 320 acres. Uh. That's a half. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I I thank God for all experiences I had in, on the farm. And I was glad I was raised on the farm. I knew how the animals mated, and uh, oh, everything how things grew, and everything. Uh, I like that part of it. But then I went to the service. And now, uh, do you the first car that you, you your family have the first car that you drove? Do you remember what that was? Model T Ford. And it was a three door. The driver's door, there wasn't a driver's door. He had to throw his leg up over it <laughs> and get out that way. Oh. Then, uh, getting to that, the, the car, the school bus. My first school bus was a horse drawn school bus, yeah. first and second grade. Then they got to, uh, they had, a, it looked like a, a bus, but they had slits, holes in the windshield. And they put the reins through there and drove the horses that way, see. Oh. <laughs> and they had a little stove, a little kerosene stove heater, about this high and about this big around. And he wired that so it wouldn't fall over in, in the middle of the deal. Side curtains all the way around, see. But uh, then we got, our first car was a, was, a, was a Model T, and then we went into a Model A Ford. And uh, let's see, what was the next? Oh, then I think about that time, something, my, we got a, a Whippet, a brand new Whippet. Mm -hmm. I can remember that thing, because I was, was three kids at the time. One on each side in the back, and, and me in the center. I like to be in the center because I like to see the, get the gauge, you know, the mm -hmm. speedometer gauge. <laughs> I like to see it go around. But I can remember him going down that, he had it wide open one time, he was going to Spencer, and on the gravel road, 60 mile an hour. That's moving yeah. at that time. <laughs> now 60, you better get all the way, someone's gonna fall <laughs> past you. I remember my dad used to say that before they had, cars had gone 60, they, people said, you won't be able to go more than 60 miles an hour. It's just physically impossible. You yeah. Know, that something would just fly apart. Just yeah. <laughs> well, especially a gravel mile, road. A mile too. a minute. Oh, yeah, those gravel yeah, roads. Oh, those are, <laughs> yeah, we had those. Uh, a lot of cars turned over on those gravel roads. Yeah. <laughs> they went too fast around the curve. So, um, you, when did you join the. Uh, well, um, so you, at first you said that they didn't want to take you when you tried to join yeah. the service. Well, so. I says, well, what do I do then? He says, well, you go home and work for your dad on the farm, because I was out of school then, see. Mm -hmm. That was in June. He says, go home and work on the farm, and we'll draft you. I says, well, what do I do then? He says, well, we'll, we'll draft you, and we'll put you in the, uh, uh, for your basic training. We, they sent me to Miami Beach, Florida, and that's where the Air Corps was started. Really so even it. though they drafted you, they, they challenged you to the Air Corps? I think they did because I got out of college. I oh, had okay, two years of, had, right, yeah. I had two years of college and, they, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that helped me. Oh, I'm sure it did. Because there's a lot of uh, guys that uh, was in there. There was 200, 200 men, I guess, in my uh, squadron in uh, basic training. Mm -hmm. And what was that like, your basic training? That was real good because it was in hotels, right down in Miami Beach, one yeah. block off of the ocean. Had me. We'd get up at four o'clock in the morning. And they'd march us down. Well, after we ate breakfast, so we got up. We'd get up at four. See, they'd march us down to uh, oh, Flamingo Park. I think it's Flamingo Park. Yeah, that's where them big birds have up there. Mm -hmm. And then we'd do our calisthenics and do our marching. Know our right foot from our left. Take a rock and put it in your right hand or whatever you know. And and then. Uh, then we'd go back and then we'd study, they'd study or give us some training. And then in the afternoon we'd get off, we'd get to go swimming. Well, the first day we were there, we, nobody had a swimming to drums. So the sergeant, he marches down to this uh, market and made us buy, buy a swimming trunks. 
Well, my dad gave me $10 when I left. And of course, I didn't smoke. I never drank it. I, in fact, I never have drank anything. I didn't, and I didn't smoke. The only thing I smoked was when I was a kid, four years old, five years old, we used to take corn silks. You know what corn silks mm -hmm. are? Wrap them up in paper, newspaper, try to smoke one, and bitter tasting. We threw them away. Funny, we didn't burn the whole field down, see? <laughs> but we didn't. And uh, it just, uh, but, and I never did, never did, that was smoking. But drinking, Dad made homebrew for himself. My dad was a—he's pretty heavy smoker, but everybody was a minor. Uh, he was—he never did uh, drink too much, casual drink, beer. He—he he made homebrew. Yeah. One time I got some some suds on my tongue and solidly tasting stuff. I said, "No more of this." I've gone through both of these wars, uh, and uh, I never had a drink of liquor in my life. That's what helped me a little bit, I think, with my religion too. Well, my grandmother, she was, she pushed me along, and my mother. I meant to ask you, uh, were you in the 4-H club when you were? Yes, I took a calf to the fair 4-H one time. Uh -huh. uh, it wasn't a, I couldn't afford a real choice calf. It was a Hereford, mm -hmm. but uh, my cousin, he was a year older than me, he had a little bit more money, so he got a, a good one to start with. They were about 400 pounds to start, see. And we had to feed them and keep track of the food. Right. So and then, then we went at the fair. They had barracks for the girls and the boys and that had calves or pigs or whatever animal they had. And uh, oh yeah, I love 4-H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good. I was in that too. Yeah. That's, uh, that's really... um, uh, your church? Did you have youth groups that you were in and stuff? Oh yes. Yes. And what would you do, and what were some of the things that you, you well, did? Well, uh, it seemed like the, the it was the Friends Church, the Quaker Church, what they called it the Friends right. Church. And uh, and they didn't believe in things. In fact, first, well, I can remember first, we didn't even have any uh, piano or anything. Finally, they got up a piano, and that poor little old lady, she, God bless her, she she played it so loud and pounded so much. <laughs> But, uh, but, but uh, my mother was a Sunday school teacher of our, of our high school class. My sister and I were in the same grade, mm -hmm. and uh, she would take us on a party, about once a month. We'd go on some party or go to some party places, and mm -hmm. and I don't know what we'd do. And we'd, well, we'd, we'd go roller skating or something like that. Uh -huh. Were you but, not? Were you not supposed to dance? We're not supposed to dance. See? But what do you do when you roller skate? Heck, I was well, dancing. I was dancing, dancing, dancing anyway. Anywhere, right? I asked my mother. I says, she, she said, don't, you don't talk about that. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, but uh, that, well, that's when I got. So I like girls, you know. Yeah. Well, were you allowed to go to the prom and to the school dances and stuff? Oh yes, oh yeah. But we didn't have any school dances. Oh, school. There wasn't been about fifty in the whole high school. Oh. Uh -huh. And uh, and of course, half of them was boys and half of them was girls practically. Right. But. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, and we just had the two, two churches in town, the, the Congregational Church and the French Church. That's in Greenville. We never, had it, never went to church in Spencer because we were six miles out of Spencer and four miles of Greenville. Right, right, yeah. um, okay, so uh, after uh, Miami then, where do you go from there? From Miami, I think we were in Miami at least a month. It might have been about five weeks mm -hmm. for our basic training. I think. It, but, oh, that was nice. I didn't realize that when I got in the ocean, you could float. Yeah. <laughs> because I, wasn't, I was a poor swimmer. I, I'm more like a rock. I still am. But when I, then when I come out here to California, oh, boy, you sink. But there, you just lay back and go to sleep, frankly. But, uh, no, uh, oh, from there we went to Richmond, Virginia. We're just going through the whole whole group, the whole 200 of us, and uh, and they took us from there to Boston. And you're still hoping to be a pilot? Well, yes. Well, I I, I still was in the Army Air Corps. Right. I know. And uh, no, I kind of give up on that because then they started giving me other work to do. I never was a volunteer. 
I seen what volunteers do. <laughs> so I never volunteered, but I never backed down. I mean, I'd, I'd do it, what the sergeant did. did. And uh, I, was, I was taught that way, respect your elders and stuff like that. And so then we went to, uh, where was it? We went to uh, Philadelphia in, in Barracks, not Barracks, Hotel, second floor, Sylvania Hotel. Then we went to Boston, and then in the hotel there for all oh, three or four months. Then we're getting, we're getting, to, went to uh, Bedford, Massachusetts. That's where we did most of our training and our schooling and try to finish up, fine tune us to go overseas. Then we went overseas. I guess we took a we took a ch ship out of I don't know where it was down in New Jersey or someplace. I meant to ask you yeah. um, the fact that you didn't drink and smoke and 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 were a Quaker, I guess. Um, and I imagine there's some pretty hard drinking guys that were in your outfit. Did they ever make fun of you or try they, and get you to they do did. things? They tried to pour it even down me. And I finally I convinced them that I do not drink and I do not smoke. So then they were good friends of mine. Okay, then, yeah, then they respected that. that and there was no fights about it, but they, they have even, they've even tried to pour some of it down. But, yeah. And I'm glad for everyone. But thank goodness, what what would I have to do now with, with all my nowadays to buy a pack of cigarettes, four or five dollars a pack? Yeah, I never do, I never smoked either. I, it's, it's, it's makes no sense. I don't either. Never made sense. Um, so did you go on a troop ship like overseas? Yes, had a big troop ship. They went over, and we we went through. Um, but what were they training you for before? Did you know what you were going to be doing? When you I, w I was with headquarters. Okay. I didn't know what I was going to be doing. Okay. They, fa finally, when we got over to Italy, see, we went to Bano, uh, the, the Rock of Gibraltar yeah. and went over on a 40 and 8 train across North Africa. 40 and 8, that's 40 men or 8 horses in a boxcar. They, they had those in World War I, I think. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. think so too. Yeah. But uh, the war was all over in uh, in uh, North in, uh, in Africa then. General Mark Clark, I see General Mark. Clark? No, no, no. Yeah, General Mark Clark. Well, I told no, no, no. Let's go away from them. Who was the Who was the? Um, well, Patton was over there. Patton. Well, he was up in Germany. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he had been in North Africa, but he was. Yeah. Oh, who? Oh, who was in Italy then? You mean? Who? Who was? No, no, no. Who was the Nazi? In, oh, uh, Rommel. Rommel. Yeah. I've heard lately, not lately, 50 years ago, that if he'd had more, if he'd had more, could got more equipment, he could have wiped us all out. Because he was a smart man. Oh, he was. Yeah. He was a smart man. General Mark Clark, oh, I was telling you about that. He, oh, I guess this whole month here, he was had this tobacco factory with us in Florence, Italy. He had two thirds of the tobacco factory. We had one wing of it. We had one sergeant. I think John Mark Clark was he a three or two general? Yeah, something like that. I don't, something I think, like. Yeah. But I, I never seen it. I seen him drive by, but that that's about all. I've and uh, what outfit are you in now? Were you over in Italy? What was a uh, your headquarters company for what? Twenty uh, second uh, Tactical Air Command. Oh, okay. That was the artillery. Uh, not not the artillery. That was the uh, Air Corps. And yet P-47s over there, did you say? P -4, P-47s, yes, we had, okay, we had... So it was a fighter squadron? There were, there were pursuit planes. Yes. And that fighter squadron, too. And we bombed with them, too. We had uh, one, no, uh, 250-pound bomb under one wing, 250-pound bomb on the other wing, and a 500-pound bomb underneath the wheels. Mm -hmm. And we claim, and I just showed a guy out here today, and. We claim that we bombed more, got more bombs off than the Billy Mitchell B-25. Mm. And I seen the B-25 out here today. Right. <laughs> I just padded high. <laughs> <laughs> but what we did most of our bombing would come in and bomb tunnels mm. and peel off and let the, the bombs go. That's why we could have them on wings and, sure. and skip bombing. Kind of skip bombing. Uh -huh. but, uh, but okay, I was going to say, I mean, we had, I think we had five groups under us. Each group had about five squadrons. Each squadron had about uh, 
eight or ten planes, pursuit planes. And they were all over around us. And they had their own airstrips and stuff like that, see. Were you part of the 15th Air Force? 12th Air Force. 12th Air Force. 12th Air Force. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, but my duty then, I, I got bumped up to corporal rating. And I had to, then I got to be a dispatcher. I had 60 some vehicles I had to dispatch out every day. But uh, let's back up just a minute. Now, the, you were going across North Africa, and then how did you, where did you go from there to get into? Uh, okay, we went, we went across there 40, uh, 40 and 8, yeah. 40 and 8. And we got off at the Mediterranean Sea there and went over to Naples. And we started up the boot. We were in Naples for a week, went on up to Rome for a week, went on up to Philadelphia, uh, up to uh, Florence. Florence, and uh, we were there for 18 months. That's a beautiful. I we've been wanting to go to Florence. Uh, did you get to see all the sites there? Uh, I well, when we got there, the whole outfit there was a soul around. That was that was probably in that 43, mm -hmm. and but then they started filtering in. And to me, the, the Italian people were wonderful. Mm -hmm. I had a, the kids would be standing up trying to get our uh, food uh, when we went to the food line. What we had left, or they'd stand up with a garbage can and hold their pans out. We got so, I don't know, uh, I hated uh, spam. And all the better, our, our whole outfit did. The poor sergeant, the mess sergeant, he says, what am I going to do? He says, I boiled it, I fried it, I, I, well, I done everything you can do. And you guys, did, we just saved it for the kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I still don't care for Spam too much. <laughs> I, I, when I was a kid, I liked Spam. My mom would fix fried Spam sandwiches. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but, um, yeah. So, so your duty, okay, so you were the vehicles. Uh, yeah, mostly the vehicles. There were 60 some vehicles. We had all the way from staff cars, which were the Plymouths. Uh, for the two generals, two one-star generals, and uh, do you remember the, who the generals were? No, I don't. I okay. I can't remember them. I never yeah. got my drivers knew because yeah. I had a driver for each one of them. Oh, yeah. And uh, so you had staff cars and staff cars, jeeps, command cars, and trucks, uh, two and a half ton trucks, mm -hmm. and I had a couple three three ton trucks that was had big. Uh, big uh, electric motors on them. To, if we're out in the field, for example, we could hook up this electricity and keep them running every other one, yeah. and it uh, give we, us all the electricity we wanted. Yeah. Uh, did, did, you get bomb did the Germans, were they trying to, were they bombing you at all when you were? No, we were back about 25 miles. Of course, 25 miles now is nothing, yeah. see. Yeah. But we were back at least 25 miles out of, uh, uh, we were right in uh, uh, Florence. Right. In that big tobacco factory, yeah. but uh, we were back. I the only thing I heard is when my trucks would go up and have to deliver something or deliver some men or or something like that, and and come back and they'd tell me the stories that would happen. They would come back down and go to a railroad station. They had it specifically made for R and R. Uh, and then they, then we get some stories about that. But outside of that, I, that was I never got into any. Uh, did casualties come back through? Uh, yes, or? some of my men brought some casualties back once in a while, and then, mm -hmm. then they disperse them around in, in uh, Florence, yeah. and uh, get them all home or fix them up and shove them back up there. I don't know. Uh, one one time, after we get after we push it on on up the road, I got to ride with the truck one time, and uh, there was a oh, what was it? Monastery, I think, up there, and uh, Germans were looking right down on us like that, and we kept warning them. Our our government kept warning them, "Get that out of there, we'll blow it." Yeah. And uh, yeah, the Monte Casino, I believe. Casino, that's mm -hmm. right, that's right, Casino. Gosh, I I've been trying to think what that is, and I got to drive through Casino. Oh, you did. And that's after they'd gone on up farther. Right. You could see a rat terrier dog run any place in that. It was about a mile square, and it, we leveled that whole thing because they wouldn't stop, and we had to take that down. Yeah. 
But uh, that's uh, all, that was the only uh, bad thing I had in, in uh, mm -hmm. Second World War. And then we had to, then we just, the war was over over there. And so we moved. You were still in Florence? Oh, I was still in Florence. Florence. The, okay, Italy had been, then, they, or they were out of Italy yeah. then. And, yeah, it was all done. Then we went back to, from Florence, we went back to uh, Corsica, a little island off, mm -hmm. of, off of Italy there. Mm -hmm. Bastia was the capital of Corsica. And we were there for, oh, we thought we was going to get it one night. The first night we was there, here come a plane over. And it, it was dark. Here we, we just moved in and took all our shovels and stuff, and, and we didn't carry them with us. We went down and locked them in a, in a building that they had there for our tools. Here come this plane over. Oh, how we, we got to get some foxholes down there. <laughs> so we, we started digging our foxholes with our helmets. Oh. <laughs> we, you get down, well, we got it down about this much. It's so hard that we just quit. And then somebody, the word came by that, oh, that was just a guy going, Charlie, that was just Charlie who was going to take pictures of us, that's all. <laughs> and, uh, but that was all, the, he never, I, don't, I guess he never seen anything because we were <laughs> but down about this far, about a foot in the ground. <laughs> but, oh, that was one Christmas now. I don't know which Christmas it was. And our folks always sent us packages, you know, how they just send us packages. Well, we always sit, sit around when, when it was, uh, especially when it was there. Got packages and everybody. When one one package is open at a time, no, you don't open them all like the kids do now. Mm -hmm. One at a time, so to stretch out. See, yeah. <laughs> well, my mother sent me a gallon, uh, a gallon can with the lid on it, and it was full of unpopped popcorn and cookies and packages wrapped in and put in between them. Mm -hmm. So I was getting that out. Oh. And here's where, here's the fun part, a can of Spam. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I started. <laughs> I said, I'm taking this back to my mother. <laughs> and I did, I took it back. <laughs> and she could use it better than I did. Yeah. Well, anyway, this popcorn, we didn't have no place to pop it. So uh, there's some civilians around there. So I asked this one civilian, uh, I says, uh, could we come to your place and, and pop some popcorn? She, he says, what's popcorn? They didn't know what it was. So a buddy of mine, right, we took the popcorn and was going to pop it. He got a pan and cooked, took some oil. He had some oil and popped it. They thought we were blowing up the plate. Right? Pop, 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 like, like that. <laughs> so we says, no, 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 it's the full food. So we, we give him some to eat. He didn't like it, see. We put a little salt on there. He didn't like it. But, so we ate it, but uh, that's where my popcorn went. Well, that's enough of that story. <laughs> that's funny. But, uh, no, uh, I, I, now that Corsica was where all the, the riffraff or the criminals and stuff come in. They bring them in from Spain, uh, uh, Spain and France, and Italy. That's where they shove them all. So I got my first shave in town and I just, I kept thinking about that. I wonder if this guy's gonna cut my throat or not. But they weren't, they were yeah. very good people. I, all the people that we met from Florence, all they were, uh, they were real good people to us. Yeah. I guess before they weren't, well, when they had to be communists. Well, I met this one family that they invited me out to, that's this one I was in Florence, that they invited me for Easter. They, and they didn't have hardly anything to eat. But we had five kinds of meat, rabbit, chicken, pork, beef, Let's see another kind, chicken, pork, beef, and fish. A little bit, maybe it's a spoonful mm -hmm. of each one. Mm -hmm. And then they had their spaghetti. The, oh, I can see the old man making spaghetti now. It was, it was, a, a, it was like a pasta. It wasn't like a spaghetti, we can think it's round. It was like a, a flat. He had a round table about like this, like about three foot diameter, four foot. He laid that, made his pasta, rolled it and sort flour on it, and he did it. It seemed like it took him a half a day to do that. And then he hung it up on string, and it across like that, hang it down, and it um, to dry. 
he let it dry. All in the meantime, when he first started, first started, he made the sauce, and we were about just about a block or a half a block from across the road with my all the vehicles in a in a park there. You could smell that come out here. It was beautiful. So they invited me to. It was Easter Sunday or Easter Sunday. So we went. We we went to church in uh, in tobacco factory. The uh, uh, chaplain. There was a chaplain there. He wasn't. Uh, he was just a Christian, Christian man. Yeah. And so anyway, these uh, this stuff they they brought it out, and of course they had a little thimble full of liquor to go with it, you know, afterwards or something. Mm -hmm. I did take a little sip on my tongue. <laughs> that's the only time I ever had anything. <laughs> but, uh, that's all. Yeah. but they even fed their kids wine. Yeah. Well, that's because, I mean, they, they would dilute right. it down with water. Right. But they, for me, and I, I, uh, they couldn't figure out why I wouldn't have to take some, but I convinced them that they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, how long were you on Corsica then? We were on there about probably about a month, mm -hmm. and then we went back to uh, oh, I don't know. It's another little town, and I was uh, I was transferred over to uh, the postal department to take care of the, all the mail because I didn't have the vehicles had already gone. I think we were headed for home at that time, mm -hmm. but we were going when we went home. We were going to go to uh, Japan. Yeah. Everybody says, and we're going to go. And probably 50% of our outfit had been over there three years. I had been there quite three years. Well, it was almost three years. But everybody was hollering, oh, we want a furlough and stuff like that. So anyway, we got going on the boat, ship. And, uh, I got another story on that. that keep, should I keep on going on yeah, with that? Yeah. Okay, we got on this ship. We were going to go through the Panama Canal and go on over. Mm. We got about two days out of the Panama Canal. The captain of the ship come on, and he was a young guy, I know he was. And he says, and he talked fast. He says, the war is over in Japan, and uh, I'm supposed to take this boat, I mean ship. <laughs> so I knew right there when he said boat. Yeah. A good captain would never, never said that to you, right? <laughs> he says, I gotta, I'm gotta, i gonna wire in or call in to, to, to Washington and see where I'm supposed to take this ship. And, <laughs> and he says, now don't go away. Well, you look around and there's water around you, see? <laughs> but so I, I knew he was that. So he said, don't go away. And okay, so he wired in. He says, I'll be back. I'll be back to you in five minutes. So he come back on the mic and he says, uh, okay, I'm supposed to take this ship to the home port. And Boston was the home port. He says, watch me turn this sucker. That's the first time I've heard sucker in my life <laughs> used. They don't use it like they do today, you see. Right. And watch, watch me turn this sucker. And he, we all got up on the, on the, on the ship and we looked at it and boy, he, you could actually see him. See, he's going down, down this way to uh, um, Panama Canal, yeah. turn it and go right up the East Coast. And in three days we were up there in Boston. One, one Red Cross girl was there to meet us. She didn't have any cookies or anything for us, but she was there just to, Nobody knew. We were the first ship in, see? Oh, uh -huh. And uh, so they they had the paperwork already, going to give us for, for fertiles, a month fertile, take these, just pass them to us like this, and after a month you come on back and we'll get to discharge. And that was Boston there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's when uh, that's when the J Japanese war was over. That right. was yeah. So then they said, okay, when we got back, they said, uh, do you want to join the reserve? A lot of the guys said, I want out of here. So I said, oh, I'll join the reserves. I, I was living in Iowa. I don't know where. They never had any reserve. It's on paper. Fort Dodge, Iowa was a headquarters at the time. And sure, I'll do it. I have nothing else to do. I didn't even have a job. And what am I going to, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? What I don't have uh, the only one that uh, pensions and stuff for the railroad men and stuff. And I didn't want to be a railroad man. I was a farm boy. Mm -hmm. but. So uh, I went back and I got a, a job, well I had the job before I, uh, when I got back there, but I mean when I went back after I got discharged, uh, I got a job with the A&P store, that's a grocery store mm -hmm. chain, in the meat market. 
making $35 a week. <laughs> I thought we were rich. See, I want to uh, uh, pause here. I got to uh, change uh, change tape. Okay. Good. How you doing? Good. I'm good. 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 I'm, I remember more than I thought it was. Oh, good. I'm running a lot. You want a little sip of water now? Oh yeah, please. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so you got it at the AMP. Did you? Uh, by this time, are you have you met? Uh, are, you, are you serious with any girl or anything by now? I was. And first of all, I was overseas. Oh, you were. Oh. And uh, who, but, who, but, where did you meet that girl that when you were? Uh, I met her at a dance. I think it was a dance. Yes, it was dances up to Lake Okaboja. They had honky tonks around, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, the big name bands fielded in there once in a while. Tommy Dorsey and oh. Jimmy Dorsey once in a while, oh, yeah. and. Uh, I don't know how I, actually how I met her. I guess somebody introduced me to her. So I went with her and I, I wrote... Uh, Do you remember her name? Elvina Thurston. And, uh, I, but I don't know, I got lazy about writing her, I guess, and I was moving around so much mm -hmm. coming home, so I lost track of her. So while I was at, working in a meat market in the A&P store, this lady walked up with her daughter, and it's, uh, she was, uh, uh, her da the daughter was named, uh, that's my first wife. <laughs> uh, my daughter's name was, uh, I'll tell you later. Anyway, the, her mother knew my folks, and here I was waiting on them, putting hamburger packages and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And so she introduced me to her. Maxine, Maxine, yeah, her name was, and the uh, last name was, uh, I still need that handful of memory pills that the doctor won't give me. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we got to go together and go into dances and stuff, and uh, I never did see Elvina anymore. That's a pretty name, Elvina, I thought. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. So going to dances like that, so that was okay for your religion and stuff? Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, we got, well we, we still, yeah, we were still in that religion. We moved out of that religion when we moved to California. Because okay. there wasn't anybody, any, there was some, I, I come to Cal, I come to um, Whittier, mm -hmm. the French church there, but I, I joined the Christian church before that. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one was it. Then, the, then we moved to, uh, Covina, uh, and then there was a Wesleyan Methodist Church there. Mm -hmm. I went, joined that, and in the meantime, my, now that was my second wife. Oh, well, let's back up here. Yeah, let's let's back up to. Yeah. I, I kind of want to back up to when you were at the AMP. Where, yeah. Did you want to become a butcher? And you said you were in the meat market part. Did you do any cutting I, I, and all that kind of I, stuff? I did that, and. Uh, I say I was there six months, and I decided to start my own grocery store, little mom oh. grocery store, oh. and it was on the south side of the town, where I had that. Do you remember Se the street it was on? Uh, yes, 71. 71 goes straight south, north and south. 18 comes, uh, comes east and west, but then it jogs into Spencer and then goes on out east mm -hmm. again. Well, I was on, we were on 71 and 18 were across right. there. Oh, that's good and location. I. Um, with my mom and pop grocery store, I put, oh, this is my first wife, that's right, this is my first wife, uh, Mickey. I put a, a big, uh, just small store. Oh, a guy walked up to me and he says, why don't you put a uh, meat market in there? Uh, not a meat market, but a, a locker plant. It was a locker plant uptown, because this Spencer was just, Probably about four or five thousand population at that time. So now it's about ten or twelve. You're talking about a meat locker? No, no, the, or, or, or the, the town mean? itself. No, no, yeah, I know, but he said to put in a locker. A uh, locker plant. 
which is like a... Meat lockers. You, that's you, what I mean. You got yeah. 20, 25, I had 250 uh, not, they're not, uh, meat lockers. It's not, they're, it's not frozen, is it? It's yes. Just, it is frozen, okay. Yeah. I had to go out and butcher pigs and butcher beef, bring them in. I had my Model A. I had, that's what I was, that was my first car. Come back, I got a Model A. It was sitting out in the farmer out there. I paid him $100 for it. <laughs> and I decided to, uh, let me get that car all the way first. I decided to put 16-inch wheels on it. So I did. I tore the whole motor down. I didn't As know opposed that. to what were the wheels normally? Oh, they're, they're smaller ones. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have been 16 inch, but they were smaller oh, around. Oh, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I had to get all new tires, so I guess we'll get wheels at the same time, because that was kind of the style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we, um, uh, got this. then I'd go out and, and butcher. And uh, I had my first wife's uncle with me to help me, I, I wouldn't, I couldn't kill a chicken. See, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> so when we do, when we did a pig, we would raise it up with a hoist in the back. I had my Model A and I had a little trailer on it, and all filled up, and the hooks in there that I could hang them on. I'd go out to the farmer, and they'd show me what pig weighed they wanted or what beef. And so Uncle Marcus, that was my wife's uh, uncle, he he would would get the pig raised up like this with one leg, with the head down, and he would stick it, a knife right in here where the juggler vein is, mm -hmm. and then it would bleed out in about a couple minutes, I'd let it down and I'd skin it all out and stuff. Well, he showed me how to do all that, but not to, uh, not to kill it. So one day we were out to my Uncle Otis's, uh, I just had one uncle, uh, my, my dad's brother, and uh, we are going to do we we're going to do two pigs, and so I had I was holding this one sort of wasn't swinging around. They they kind of stiffen out a little bit when you hang them like that, and I was holding it. Uncle Mark he grabbed the knife and he says, "Here, you won't learn any younger." That's the exact words he says. I grabbed it and I seen him do it so many times. I just did the same thing and I got a good stick. And from then on, he wouldn't do any of it. And the beef, for example, uh, I. I got so I could kill them, but where the eyes crossed the horns, like that, that's the thinnest part in the skull. I take my little single shot r rifle and stun them, and stun them, and then they just go down on like that, and I walk up beside them and and, and cut their uh, jugular vein, mm. and then then I take it, the whole thing in to my plant that we got there. That's that. See, I've I've got already. Cut the ropes with the A and P store. I got this this plant in there, <coughs> and I'd sell them. I had 250. I had most of them sold. The farmers would buy buy them, mm -hmm. see, not buy them, but they would rent them. And uh, they would hold probably some of them had to have two of them because if there's a beef, big beef, and I'd, I'd cut that the, the pig in half right there, and I could hang a half a pig at a time, see, mm -hmm. and, and back in my little trailer, and my uh, for a beef, I'd have to quarter it. I'd have to cut it in two, then I'd have to quarter, take the one quarter out, hind quarter, and, and put the other one, and put all four of them. I, I could get maybe two pigs and, and a beef in my trailer at once. And then I'd go back to town and put it in a uh, chill room. I had a chill room. I'd hang it up in there, and roll it in this big long room. It was about six foot wide and about uh, 24 foot long. A cable up there, and I'd put them on there and go, because people don't like to eat fresh meat, they like it uh, aged a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd learned that part up at the A and P store to age it a little bit. So I'd ask him, "How many pounds of hamburger do you want?" Oh, first of all, what do you want on this beef? Well, we want all the steak we can get. So I'd cut all the steak. How many's in the family? And uh, how, how many pieces do you want? So they, I'd come up, then I'd wrap it all up and mark it. They had it marked too. There was a, they had their own stamp. Their, their locker plant was a, it was marked, and so I do it. Then I put it into after I got it all cut up and wrapped. I put it into a, a, a freezer room, which it was about six by six, and I could turn it down to so it'd go down to uh, ten below zero. And overnight, it, I'd roll it into carts, and yeah. overnight it would freeze solid, 
and uh, next morning they take that stuff out and put it in their boxes. Then they come in and buy groceries, get to, give it to their meat, because they're going out of town and going south anyway. And uh, what was the what would get it so cold? Uh, I have big big coolers. Big, uh, I, but I mean the um, uh, the equipment that that that. Was it like an air conditioner? Is yeah. Kind of the same, same yes, yes. principle, more yeah, or Yeah, well, the, the, the chill room was this long one. Right. I didn't have to have it this high. I, I think I had a three or six, three horsepower compressor or something like That's that, whatever they call it. And it was, it, I had it so it would just chill it out. Right. Probably, it wouldn't freeze in right. that. But I'd work on it the next day. Mm -hmm. But then I put it, and the next day after I take the others out of that little six by six, I put them in right in the white belt, get them out of the way, see. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course they were all marked and stamped and numbered right. and everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the farmers had come in mm -hmm. and get the, but see that so on the south side of town, they did all their big shopping up there. So they would come down and pick their meat up and go on home. See, wouldn't it be in the, uh -huh. wouldn't, wouldn't throw out at all. I, and I had a big sign out in front of my little place. And I, I got so I sold ice cream by the by the by the gallon I guess it was or boxes I don't know what they were or not. Yeah. Anyway, I could I could sell ice cream cheaper than they could uptown with the A and P store and uh, I don't know Vons and Stater went to, I forget what to the other but the A and P store because yeah. I had a lot of room I, I put my ice cream right in on them at the chill rooms mm -hmm. and uh, and every time I sell a hundred. He'd give me five cents more off of the package, see. So I could just pack them up all I want, all different kinds of them. So I, I made a good yeah. deal on that. Did you live in the store too? I mean, yes. at home? Yes, we, uh, we had a big room in there. In fact, I had to uh, make furniture. We bought some unfinished furniture and we made it, uh, made that, and somebody told us how to do it. Uh, lacquer, lacquer thinner and, and stuff like that, put it on first and, and then, uh, it was all clear. It was all clear, but it was, boy, you could just almost look and see yourself in it. And uh, uh, so how long did you live there uh, and have your store? Okay, now, uh, I lived there probably about two, maybe three years. Then we decided to move to California. And why did you decide to move to California? Well, my cousin, she was out here in Whittier, and they were wholesale dressed chickens and uh, to uh, restaurants and to grocery stores. Uh, what's, what's the names of the chickens now in California? Uh, sta uh, you know, big companies. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Anyway, they weren't even started yet. Foster farm, yeah. farms and places like that, yeah. And uh, so we did pretty well in that, but see then in the meantime, just get back into my service here. I had to move out here. I went into the reserve. I come up, walking uptown one day, and this guy walked up to me and he says, I'm Captain Herbster. I want you to help me start a National Guard unit. Now this is back in... Uh, Iowa. Iowa, right. Yeah, that's, after, that's after I got my... Yeah. Uh, after I got uh, uh, di discharged. Mm -hmm. So right away, I uh, see I was in the reserve then. I stayed in reserve. I wanted to keep that a test. Yeah. I wanted to do that because I didn't want to have to go to, I was a corporal at the time, or no, 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 I was a sergeant at the time, buck sergeant. I didn't want to have to start all over and work up away, so if, it, if it'd flare up a little bit. Right. I don't know what gave me that thought, I don't know, maybe it's an uh, angel thought or something. <laughs> but I did it, and I went, uh, and I was going, where was I at? Um, how you guys started the National Guard unit there. Oh yeah, so I got, so, and, I, and so all we had to do was, to start it, we had to get people in, so we had to recruit them. So I helped them that for two weeks only. A letter come down from Fort Dodge, from headquarters. And then they, and I'd, I'd change it over to National Guard, see, at that time. Come down and says, okay, uh, you come down and take a test, and if you pass the test, you automatically get a commission. 
I had to be overseas at least six months in order to get it. And the test was nothing but, I would say, a dumbbell test. It was like, they were trying to find out if it was, I was shell-shocked or something like that. See? Real easy. Second lieutenant, I got back. I was second lieutenant. Second command. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then from then on, I, I, stay, I think I stayed there in Iowa for about two, two, two and a half years. Then I moved to California in 1948. And um, I went to Whittier, that's where they lived. They had their chicken place there in Rose Hill Cemetery in the back. They, my cousin, she, and her husband, and me, we run this thing. He would go out, Gary, uh, Lee, the Erickson was his name, he would go out and buy chickens from the ranchers and bring them in. Now he went to, he went to places like uh, Knott's Berry Farm. Mm -hmm. Knott's Berry Farm had to have their chickens a right, exactly right ounce. We got all the bigger ones, see. What, what do we care? We get paid for, see. And, and so, and we got prime chickens, see. And uh, so he would bring them in in cases. And, and we had another gentleman that was there too, but he raised chickens about three or 400 a week for us. And you would dress them out? And we would dress them out. He would buy them from him. We'd dress them out and, mm -hmm. and then deliver them. And uh, I remember the most I ever did, uh, I was always, always in competition. My cousin, she, she kind of was too. Friday, one Friday night, Oh, on Friday afternoon, it was Friday afternoon. This restaurant, and they they'd taken, they'd take probably two or three hundred chickens a, uh, a week. They called us up Friday afternoon, kind of late. They said, "No, that was Thursday afternoon." They says, "We went, uh, uh, we want a hundred chickens in here in the morning." Okay, so we went. went and he, my, my cousin-in-law or whatever, uh, Lee. He went out and got some chickens. We had some on hand already, and the guy that was there that was raising them along with us, he had some. So we said, we're going to have a little competition here. He put them all in the bo boxes like that. Now his, their plant was that, first of all, I had to hook them up. I put six chickens up on a rope, hanging them up here like this. Six chickens, six in the bundle. 36 chickens hanging up here. I, I hung them up there, and then I started cutting their throats. Just, just take them and just cut, make a slot right down here. Do all, all 36 of them. In a minute's time, they're all drained out. Well, it takes longer to cut them, but I mean, it all takes us a minute for each mm -hmm. one. Then it goes into a um, scalding mm -hmm. deal. And, uh, and it's, it goes in and, and uh, turns around in a big scalding, and, uh, and and these are fried, frying chickens, they're tender anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, at a certain degree, I forget it was 38 degrees, I don't know what it is for sure now. But anyway, I, uh, we, we scalded them, then it went into a picker. Mm -hmm. And this was a big a coil, a tube-like deal, with rubber stingers sticking out. And the way you hold them deal, the chickens, you can put it down like that, or like this, my cousin showed me how to do it, or her husband did. And uh, so we says, okay, let's, we got a hundred here. Let's see how long it takes us to do it, to cut them all up, pin them, and get them ready for, to take them out. It took us an hour to the, hour and 45 seconds to do it, to do a hundred. Wow. Now that's moving right along, yeah, see. Yeah. From now how, how does that machine get the feathers out, feathers out after you scald them? them? Them fingers come out of this, uh, tubular thing, and it goes around. Okay. Then as, as, as it goes out of the fingers, the finger just rubs them right off. Because they're, they're scalded, so that you can take it this way, but I mean, the fingers will take some off so much faster. Yeah. I mean, would you have to go in and hand, I mean, would it miss some? Would you have to? Uh, the, uh, that's what out? she did, that's what oh, my cousin did. Okay. She picked, I, I would do this, and I'd throw it over there in, in a tub, ice water, and then she'd take them up and, and take a little paring knife Certain kind, of, about the size size of your finger, about like that. And she could just scrape them a little bit, oh, and they just come right off. Now, for a turkey or for something else, it took a little more. Uh, oh, that's yeah. Deal. But uh, yeah. we did that whole thing 
whole hundred of them in an hour and 45 seconds. 45 seconds after I was done, she was done. Now, did you have any children by your first wife? My first wife had two children. And uh, what were their names? Uh, what are their names? Joel, Joel Gritton, and uh, Martha, Martha Gritton. Yeah. Do they live in California? Here? Yes. So yeah. were they, when, before you went over to Korea, were they already born then? Uh, Joel was born, yes. So how did you find out that uh, they wanted you back in on active duty? How did I find out? See, I was joined, I joined the National Guard and I went to California. Right. And I switched over to, uh, I went into, uh, I went to uh, Whittier. Then I went on out to, uh, what's it, not East L.A., but Montebello. That was Sea Battery uh, Artillery Unit. Mm -hmm. So Headquarters Battery was uh, up at uh, the racetrack up there in uh, Santa North. Santa Anita? No, yeah, Santa Anita. What, what's that town there? Uh, um, yeah. Well, there, there's a hospital there, and there's, there's our unit right there, yeah. too. That was the headquarters. Well, I went to Montebe Montebello. No, 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 not Montebello. Montebello was where Sea Battery was. I was there first because it was closer to home. Then they transferred me up to headquarters. It was a headquarters battery. So I went up there, and then they finally got me in there, and I was, uh, I was, I don't know if I got to be a headquarters commander for a while. Not, not the battalion. See, this is a whole battalion. We had Azusa, and we had. Uh, a battery, B battery, C battery, and headquarters and service, five different batteries. And they were strong all over in that area. Arcadia. Arcadia is what I'm talking about. That was the headquarters. Mm -hmm. So we went up there. Then, And in the summertime, we'd go up to Camp Roberts or Hunter Liggett up there to, uh, to our, for our summer camp. Mm -hmm. But then I stayed in the National Guard till, till uh, the, the 40th Division, well, when the uh, Korea broke out, and 40th Division says, well, we want an artillery unit, so they took our whole unit. And we had probably, uh, uh, I would say maybe 2,000 altogether men of ours, but we weren't filled up yet. What kind of artillery pieces did you have? We had 105s, 155s, and 8 inch. And uh, we never got of just one time that I ever shot her eight inch. I, I was a I was a forward observer when I when I went to Korea. And first of all, we were in Camp Roberts for about oh six months, the whole unit, and trying to get more men in. And then we then we had to start drafting them. And uh, then after we got as many drafted as we could hold. Or we could get. We went to uh, Japan for six months. We were up here six months, mm -hmm. Japan for six months, then we went over to Korea and was over there about six months. What part of Korea were you in? I don't know. I don't. I was out. I was out, out on the Tuileries most of the time and up in the hill. I don't know a town. Everybody said so. Well, I mean, this I that. mean, you know, it kind of it was back and forth. Yeah. Where where were our line, where were the lines pretty much the, when you well, got the, there? Well, there was one line. No, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. See, I was up on the hill. Yeah. I was up on the hills of Harbor Reserver. But uh, somebody. But said, this was probably after Incheon after and all all that. Yeah. So it, where they had so we had. It was almost. It was almost over. Right. At that time, because uh, now when you're uh, a forward observer, how far in advance of the your artillery pieces are you usually? Our pieces could be four or five miles behind us. We'd be shooting mm -hmm. across over us all ourselves all the time, mm -hmm. and I, I know where I shot. I could, I'd get up on my bunker in the morning and take my binoculars and uh, look, scan the horizon to see where the enemy was. And you could see him and, pretty Yeah, you pretty could good. see And I'd be about seven or 800 yards away from him. But I were up there, I was in a bunker. A bunker is a king size a foxhole. Yeah. And uh, I had a, a, a black uh, officer with me. He was sharper than a track. Mm -hmm. But he'd been in quite a while before the war. It would just be like the two of you up there? Or did uh, you? That, well, we were here, but the, 
the captain of the of the infantry, he was there with his group. Well, his guys there to protect not his group, but I, what, what's, what do they call him? A platoon well, or well, a well, the whole or thing. Oh, a battalion or no, or a the low battalion com company. 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 Okay. He would have his, okay. and I would be the only one, the forward reserver. My sergeant was he was up there with me. I had a jeep driver. He was there. Of course, it took us a half a day chogi up the hill mm -hmm. to get up there, and. Uh, then I, I, I would be in conversation with the captain all the time, and he would tell me where he wanted to rounds go, what the concentrations were. Right. Mm -hmm. And we had them all laid out before, before I even got up there. Just look at my map, and he, or he would, he say, I want uh, so many rounds on this concentration. Or if he didn't have anything there, on the map he'd give me coordinates mm -hmm. and, and see where I'm supposed to go. And how accurate? How accurate? Could you, how accurate I, could you guys be? With your uh, we could go within 50 yards. If we got at 50 yards, everyone had to go into fire for effect and shoot them all, shoot six or 12, whatever. But that's that's we were all done after we shoot out of fire for effect. Yeah. I didn't uh, over there. I had two two bad scenes, not for me, but for the enemy, and that uh, was all I had. I was just up there 10 days. And I went back, and then I was in headquarters battery. Could you see the effect of your uh, your shelling on the enemy? Yes. Well, I was I was looking over th this one back and forth, and I seen this guy doing it before that too, or looking trying to find me. Yeah. And uh, in the in the meantime, Were back they? back in head uh, back in our in the army there, they had cut us off for ammunition. We couldn't have any more ammunition un unless we had. 20 enemy in the open. Now this this is uh, getting kind of sticky. And but this this is a truth what happened. So I said to myself, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to lie, in order to be able to shoot. It's going to be either me or that or that guy. So I said, well, I'm I'm here. I <laughs> I brought my book. <laughs> my uh, paraphernalia with me to shoot. That's what it's there for. But I wasn't supposed to. So anyway, I'd say, uh, 20 enemy in the open. And uh, so I would shoot it out there. And so S2 would come back and say, okay, what, uh, that's intelligence. What, what did you get? What did I get? That guy, I says, uh, kill one or Killed two, and the rest of them dispersed. So now here's the statistics comes from that, and I don't believe in statistics. Mm -hmm. It went back to my outfit. They added their 10% on. Went back to Army. They had their 10% on. It went back to uh, uh, next one of Army. They had their 10% on. It went, to the, it went to the newspaper. They had their 10% on. I had killed 50 or 100 men. And of course, it come out to the papers. They killed fifty to a hundred men. Mm -hmm. And the enemy, they had artillery pieces that would be shooting at you guys. Yes, they had mortars, mostly Mort mortars. mortars yeah. yeah, they couldn't go as far as we could, but we we, we were more accurate than all of them. Did you but, have any of them come in close to you? No, I never did. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems like though that every time it comes out to the paper, we kill more enemy than they killed us. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why they get all this big glow, glow up or something. Yeah. But uh, no, then there's another time, uh, this is the biggest time, I was doing the same thing. And here are these guys, the enemy, you can see shovels of dirt come up. They were digging foxholes along there, right? probably about 50 yards along there. So. Uh, I think I think we could have all the ammunition we wanted at that time. So then I shot out there. I knew the concentration shortage. I shot 105s out there, and then that was probably about six guns, one shot. And uh, and they're still shoveling. So I said, "What to do? What to do?" I said, well, "Okay, I'll ask for the 155. That's a bigger shell." And they shot it up. I shot them out there, about 12 of them, and uh, they still kept shoveling. 
our full bird colonel, our headquarters, our uh, battalion commander, come on. He says, Grit. He called me Grit. Grit is my name. He called me Grit. He says, Grit, what's going on up there? So I told him all the things. They're, they're still shoveling. He says, I'll give you the eight inch. He says, now this is going to be a delir delayed piercing uh, round. It'll go in the ground, then it'll blow up. I says, well, I never shot one of them before. He says, I, he says I'll shoot it. You just tell me where it's going. Well, we had the concentration on it. I had the concentration on the others, so they just switched them over in the uh, FDC center, and uh, he shot them out there. And, and uh, the same way I, I said, I, they, I seen, I seen five or six guys flying through the air, and that's the only ones that I ever killed that I know of. And uh, then I said, kill five, uh, uh, rest of them dispersed. But then, uh, then I got to go down on the hill when I was there till the war was over. And, just doing some duties. Yeah. So uh, you came back uh, uh, to California then. Uh, yes. Did you go back into the same business? Uh, no. Well, no. I went. I went to. Uh, got to come back. I went to the National Guard again. They broke it up. The National Guard. I went back to the National Guard because I didn't have it. About I think six years or seven years more to go, and I could to get a twenty-year deal. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was a uh, first lieutenant then. I didn't get my captain's rating until I got back to California with the National Guard, it's a National Guard Commission. Yeah. And uh, then I went, oh, I, I've had, other th in the meantime, I've had the rug and the poster cleaning, because my in-laws had, with my second wife, my in-laws had, they had the biggest plant in, in uh, Los Angeles. What did your first wife pass away? Well, yeah, my first no, she, she got a divorce, divorce from me when I when I got uh, when I got from uh, got out of Korea. Oh, I see. But she uh, one morning she was sitting was in, our home was in uh, Whittier there, mm -hmm. and she was sitting at the table. And she says, "Van," she says, "I don't love you anymore," and I knew she was true to me. Both of my wives are true to me. I can I can tell that I know that, and I don't think we should live together. So she, got, I said, I was, I was broken up because nobody in my family had ever done, yeah. had been divorced before. So I, I, uh, I got me an apartment and got into it, and uh, she divorced me. But we had the two kids at the time. So then I was divorced. Well, I call it vacation for two years. <laughs> but. And you're, where did you meet your second wife? Then I, oh, well, I lived in Whittier. Of course, my first wife, she had the house. But I put in a divorce procedure that if she ever sold it, I could buy it back for the equity that's in it. Because the equity, see, that's just what you got in it. I had to pay $700 to get in it first. See, this is my GI loan, 4% GI loan. So I got that, I got that, and uh, well then about a year later she decided to uh, move closer to her work and stuff like that. She was a secretary for, I don't know, some, some outfit. But my two, my two wives, they were smart, real smart, for simple reason. Neither one of them had high school education. My first wife, when she got to do a job, she would find out, well, when's my raise going to be first before she get it? And they said, well, yet you have to go on for 90 day, days, then come in and we'll see. Every 90 days that she had that job, she was in there. <laughs> My other wife, she learned, learned how to run a General Motors bookkeeping system on her own. Mm -hmm. She was working for a, uh, a, a guy that uh, was a, uh, he sold used cars, and then he got into new cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. But she knew all that. She was a, a manager of that. Where, and so both of them were smart women. So. Yeah. Where did you meet your second wife then? Oh, okay. Well, I got the house back. Yeah. I paid, I paid sixteen hundred dollars. I got that whole house back. Right down the well, right on this side was a lady. She was always trying to fix me up with somebody else. She was always trying, trying to fix me up. But I wasn't interested too much. I was working in a restaurant at Long Clearman, Stekenstein, and Pico Rivera, 
and of course they have five or six of them now. Both both the Clearmans are all passed away, and their boys passed away. The, the whole thing's into a trust now. Five, mm. five restaurants. Well, anyway, I worked in there, and then I, uh, this lady here, she finally fixed me up with to go down and see this lady here, that uh, a friend of hers. And so we went down there, and I think we was going to eat. Yeah, I think she got something to eat, and we. Uh, and she had a, a daughter, Carol, mm, okay. my second wife. Yeah. So, and I just lived right there. So I and I, I walked up there, but she, uh, my wife Ardell, she uh, she drove me home. She had a Oldsmobile something hardtop mm -hmm. deal, and she drove me home. So I says uh, before I got out, I said. Ardell, would you and Carol like to go out to eat sometime? See, I see. I included your daughter. I thought I better because she she'd been going with this guy quite a while. And she says, "Well," she says, "I'll have to." How old was Carol? Then? Carol was eleven. Eleven. Okay. And uh, she says, uh, "I better think about it a little while." Well, this guy that she's been going with, he he's married, but he, his wife was some kind of sickness or something, and he he was awful hard to get rid of her. Get rid of her at the time. But she'd been she'd been a single or Ar there was for for seven or eight years before. Was she must have been about ten years before because Carol was born. And uh, so sure she says I'll take you out there. I'll take you to dinner or I'll I'll let you take us to dinner. So I took her to a little place, not that same night, but uh, next night or two. And first thing Carol says. And I order steaks, and my wife she she ordered a little bottle of wine. I, I wouldn't drink any of it, but she 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 ordered that, or I ordered it for her. Mm -hmm. Carol says, uh, "Van," she says, "Could I have a hamburger instead of a steak?" <laughs> <laughs> Kids like that, see? Oh, that's right. I said, "You sure can." It saved me probably two or three bucks. <laughs> well, that's when steaks was about three mm. three dollars or something like yeah. that. She <laughs> says, uh, "Sure." Sure, I says. So I, I won her over right there. Yeah, right. So Ardell says, well, uh, I'll have to think about it a little bit. So then we went together a couple, three times. And finally, about six months later, she says, well, I think, I don't know if we will or not. I'm going to check with my dad. So she went and checked with her dad. Her dad loved me. I was a hard worker and uh, everything else. In the meantime, I'd, I'd been rugging the postal cleaning for myself. No, that was after that. Back, back, back up a little bit. Anyway, her dad got her in the corner and he says, Look, why don't you marry him? He's a good man. He's a good Christian man. He's good this and he's good that. He's got two years of college. He's got out of the war. What else do you want? Ardell says, Well, Dad, he's not, he's not as good looking as he is. And he's short. He says, "Have you looked in the mirror lately?" <laughs> I loved him because he he had another story. He had a, a fourth grade education. That's it. He says, "Have you looked in the mirror lately?" So she went over and looked in the mirror. He says, "You're not going to get any better looking than that yourself." So she decided to marry me then. And what did her dad do? What kind of work had he? He done? was in the rug and the postal cleaning business. No. Mervyn Beaumont. He, his, Ardell's sister's husband was in the rug cleaning business, and so he merged in with him. They wanted to grow a bit of big, bigger plant, and they went into Los, uh, into Los Angeles on Slauson, right close to the freeway there, and built, uh, built a big plant, a rug cleaning, loose rug plant. It would hold nine, no, it would hold 60 9 by 12 rugs at one time. You hung them up. First of all, you have to dust them. It goes through a dusting machine, bang, and dust them, get the dust out. Then it goes through a scrubber, and the scrubber is just like this, all along it. Then it was went to a rinser, and the uh, rinsing just the flesh all that dirt out. Then they took them in there this big room and hung these 69 by 12s up. 
turn on the heaters and fans in two hours. That way they were all dry, ready to roll up and bring them out to people. They had tubes in there. They had them all marked. They're all, all the rugs were marked with tags who's who, on their invoice and stuff. And so they they started that plant. Well, I, they said, what? And then I was in rug cleaning business a while before. I had uh, Whittier, I had uh, Pasadena, I had uh, Downey, and all everything in between that. But they had everything else. Mm -hmm. They had the uh, Los, Los Angeles School District tied up with the, all the schools. All the pads, all the loose rugs, oh, everything they had to go through it. And it was about a $30,000 deal once a year when school was out. Mm -hmm. So I had my, so I was, I was in the rug cleaning business for about nine years. And uh, that was my second wife, Ardell. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we moved from there to uh, Covina. We wanted more property. I was a farm boy and I wanted more property. So we got two acres up there. Uh -huh. yeah. And we finally built a swimming pool in there. Of course, Carol was grown up mm -hmm. she, and she had her friends over. And uh, we had two acres of uh, lemon grove. And we had all kind. Of, we had ninety some trees, but some of them were orange. Some of them were uh, grapes. We had some grape vines at about twelve foot of grape vines, and, yeah. and we had a, a nice little farm there. So we decided to move a house in. So we moved a house in off of the freeway, the Pasadena Freeway, when they first went in. The contractors come in and, and made a bid on all these houses, and then they would auction them off or sell them. Well, we got one, and that was an that's. A, I don't know if you want to hear the story. I think I'll tell you anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we was driving up there. Well, we seen an ad in the paper that houses for sale by owner. Well, some owner had, had bought one of these houses from a, a contractor. And the, the ideal, you, they had to get it cleaned off of there at, by a certain time, in about two weeks or something like that. So you had to physically pick the house pick up the, and take it to wherever right. you were going to. Well, there was three. It was in three parts. Oh. Two car garage is one part. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, master bedroom, 25 foot by 25. Closets and bathroom and shower and everything else in that. And they had the main house, three of them. So they, uh, first of all, we went and seen, uh, seen it, and went, walked through it. Hardwood floors over all that. And we went up there, and uh, the guy says, "Yes, I." He says, uh, "I can make you a deal." He says, "I can't. I can't get me a lot to, get, to be able to move it on." Well, we had a lot. We had that two acres. We could put it any place. So, so we seen him, and we decided to buy it. Well, then we was looking for a guy to move it, and uh, I says, and I, I went to a. a I went to a banker. He said, oh, we can't loan anyone. You don't have enough collateral. You don't have enough uh, stuff. You don't have enough um, uh, much money in here to, to, to let us do it. So we called this mover, and he says, don't worry about it. I'll get, I'll get some to it. He says, I see what you got here. You got, this is all paid for. Mm -hmm. I see it. He says, I'll move it for $1,200. The whole works. And it had to move it 12 miles. He put it on, they raised them up, all of them, different, three, three different bundles, put Christmas tree lights all the way around. He had to move it after midnight. They moved it down, and of course I had my foundation uh, up about where I wanted it, lined it up. I wanted to, he had to come in with the garage first, and then that main house, and then, and then the other ones, because the, the other one wasn't fastened on to it. I wanted to fasten on the, that master bedroom. It was two bedrooms besides that and that. So, so midnight we peeled in there, and the next morning the people got up and see these three things there, three uh, buildings. Yeah. And so we fixed that up, and uh, so that made us. Then we that would be, make us just about. Oh, first of all, the amount we paid for it. We said, well, how, how much do you want for this? He said, would you give me? But uh, he says, first of all, he says you have to have it off here in two weeks. If he don't, he says, I will lose my, um, something he puts down first, I have to do it. $3,000 down, I think, 
bond or something. And uh, so my mover, he says, I'll take you out. Oh, my banker says, no, he wouldn't do it. He would do it. The mover says, I'll get somebody. He called me on the phone. He says, it's true. You can, we can go in and get it. Because it cost you $1,200 to move it. Yeah. Go, I says. <laughs> so uh, we moved it down there. Yeah. But I, now, there's, now here's the one mistake I made in my whole life. I thought that I could do most of the work myself, let that down and all. It took me a year to a day, to the same day, to be able to move back in there. See, I was in the front house. Oh, mm -hmm. And my cousin, uh, Lee Erickson, I was with the chicken man, he was out of business then, and uh, he was he was a cement man then, doing the drug. But, uh, and he, they brought it in and set it up on deals, and then he was going to have to build up to it. And the mover says, okay, now we'll come back when you call us, and we'll come and we'll let it right back down on. Mm -hmm. They had big uh, uh, deals that they had on a truck, back of a truck, and they'd let that right down one inch at a time, all the way around. They did one building at a time. And But it took, what, a year to the day to yes. do it. That was, if I'd have got a contractor, and they could knock it out in, a, in probably two months, see. Yeah. I had to have a new build, a new uh, roof on it. That's what, it had a fireplace and everything. Mm -hmm. We put another big fireplace in it because we made a, a family room in there, a big room. How long did you live in that house then? We lived in it 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. And what was it on a street finally, or uh, you were out in the country kind of? Or what? Okay, you know what Hortan is? Yeah. You know where uh, Zusa Boulevard is? Mm -hmm. You go up Zoo, up about to, to uh, Cypress. You go down Cypress, and right there, about two blocks, there it is on the corner. Oh. It was a pie-shaped deal. Uh -huh. It was a pie-shaped thing. There was a there was a, a drain running through it on the back, yeah. on the on the pie. It was like this, and it was kind of got like this, and then a pie like this. Well, the county came in, and they wanted to widen the road. We paid. Twelve thousand some for this house. I mean, for the one that was already there, the land. We paid twelve hundred for the, the buildings we moved in to get done. Now he was going to let it down on there, which he did. Then I then it took me a year to date before I could get it done. So then then they paid me for that twenty three foot front for the for the widening of the road, mm -hmm. see. See, I had it all irrigated. I could, I could irrigate every every month and it would, uh, all the trees and uh, it cost me about $16 a month. All the water I wanted, see. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we went ahead and uh, we lived in there for about 20, about 20, years. 20 years too. Did you uh, um, um, did you did you stay in the rug uh, cleaning business all this time? I had four jobs at one time, mm -hmm. and one one cleaning rug was for myself. I went in, in went in and took my loose rugs and uh, let them do it, and I'd help them with my nuts. So that's two jobs. Mm -hmm. I. Uh, I got two more jobs coming up now. Let's see. Oh, I worked in this restaurant for 15 years at night. And the restaurant was closed on Monday night. And guess who what I did then? Went to National Guard. Oh, yeah. So I had four jobs oh, for wow. about 15 years oh, here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. My wife would have to, she had a big uh, four by eight sheet of map of Southern California. She'd have to tell me where I was supposed to be going. <laughs> and when did you retire? I retired uh, as quick as I had. Well, I, I, could, I think I could retire, I was part of it, because it was a National Guard right. thing, at 60. Mm -hmm. And here I'm 85. Wow, yeah. So I've been, I don't know, I don't know if I got it all. I, don't th I think I just got part of it then, when mm -hmm. I retired. Yeah. But then, in the meantime, 55, I homesteaded five acres out here in Morongo. Okay. And um, we didn't move out here till 79. But then, in the meantime, we've had seven, had eight, eight different rentals, individual homes. That's what we made our money on. Oh, yeah. 
And but then I got out of I was out of the service. I think in well, it was is uh, nineteen forty-two to tw I figured twenty-two years. Now what would that forty-two and and twenty would be sixty-six, 60, 66, 64, yeah. 64 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. And uh, so that's where I'm at now. Yeah. Uh, and, and your second wife, she's she's passed away. Did you say? Second wife had cancer of the colon, oh. passed away. But oh. and my my wife, uh, my first wife, she she married again, mm -hmm. and she passed away. What was her deal? I can't remember. I, yeah. yeah. But then I had uh, Carol, this wife. And then I got another uh, with uh, Ardell, mm -hmm. my last wife. Uh, Mary Ann is my youngest daughter. Oh, okay. So you had a four, you had a, a daughter, Mary Ann. Four, 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 four kids. Oh, yeah. And where does Mary Ann live? She lives in Morongo too. Oh, so they, they She's got three horses, three dogs, and a <laughs> husband. Her, her, uh, Mary Ann's daughter. She just graduated from uh, Cal State San Diego. Mm -hmm. Her and her friend, they went through high school and grade school. They moved after she got out of uh, school. They moved to New York City. Oh my God. <laughs> what a deal a switch with her. Yeah, really. But she's good. She's uh So she's, how many grandchildren do you have? Grandchildren, I think I have ten and eleven now. Oh, eleven. Yeah. I got one the other day. It's a great grandchild. Great. Oh I got I got five great grandkids. Oh you do? Gosh. Wow. Yeah. That's I got a, a boy the other day. Now you're still involved in your church? No, when I married our Ar Ardell, I went to Wesleyan Methodist Church, I said. But then I started going to, uh, I lived in Covina, uh, and uh, her mother come out and lived with us for a while. And she, in fact, she came out and lived with us for, when, uh, up in Morongo. But she was a Christian scientist. So I switched over to Christian science. I'm a Christian scientist. Mm -hmm. But people say, well, okay, you ask, they ask, what is a Christian scientist? Is it, they, they, don't, they don't take medicine. They don't take medicine. They go on faith. Now, I just been taking medicine here two or three months ago because I had a mini stroke. Mrs. Eddy, Mary Baker Eddy, I don't know if you've heard of her probably. Oh, see, mm -hmm. she, she, well, you know the Christian Science Monitor the newspaper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, she's founded that. Oh, okay. We got, we got churches all over the world. Mm -hmm. The main church is in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, but, uh, her, Carol's grandmother was a good Christian Science Carol is too. Mm -hmm. We don't have preachers, we have readers. We got two readers, first and second reader. The first, the second reader reads the Bible. The second reader reads Science and Health of the Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The second, re or the first reader, the Science and Health explains what the Bible you're talking about. They, they, they pick it out at the Mother Church and send it down to us. We get it. Same thing all over the world every week. And uh, but um, so there are certain times you can take medicine and other times not. Well, is, uh, well, she says right in right in her science and health. She says if you if you are so bad that your faith don't bring you up to our level, then you go you go and get a good doctor. Don't get a quack. I'm trying to find out. It's in her prose works or someplace. <laughs> Don't get a quack. Get the yeah. best one, then come back, and get on our, our level again. Mm -hmm. And but our level is so high. I had, a, I had a, a testimony. I give a testimony on Wednesday night. We have testimonies on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. I give a testimony the other night. It's been about two weeks ago now, and uh, I'd lost my tea, keys. Car keys, my house keys, got them all on one. I still got her. Oh, she, no, she's got them because she's she driving from me. So anyway, I looked all over her place, every closet. And I just moved to that house about four months ago. That was one one of my rentals. I looked all over in the garage, in the car, and every place, jacket pockets. And uh, I said, "Well, that's just to myself." I said, "Good Lord, you're going to have to find them for me." I know they're not lost, they're just misplaced. And I says, I misplaced them and I don't know where I put them. You're gonna to have to find them. So I went on to bed. I, I never thought about it, but I, I got, I woke up, 
an angel thought. Uh, every, th every good thought comes from God, you know that. An angel thought come to me in the middle of the night, woke me right up. He says, what do you, what do you want, God? What do you want? He says, I know where your keys are. Your keys are in the cl closet right there by the door. Has got a closet and hanging in your jacket pocket. Now, I believe that's so strong, I didn't even get up and go look. I did, unless it's honest truth. I told this, sent this deal a couple times out of the church. So the next morning, the next morning, oh yeah, I went in there and there they were in that grip. So that's a, that's a, uh, we we call it a, it's a testimony, but it's a healing. Mm -hmm. It's a healing. But I believe in God, so why didn't I go in there right away? Normally, I probably, if it had been a $10 bill, I'd probably go and got it. But it wasn't. It was just my keys, but the keys were worth more than that. <laughs> but. Oh, that's a great, I think we're just about out of time here, okay. so that's a good, I think it's a good note to end on. I can see that's the philosophy of your life, isn't yes, it? Yes, that is. Yeah. Now I'm a good Christian. <laughs> well, well, you're a good person, and thank you I want to thank you for your service to our country and for coming in and sharing with us today. Thank you for listening to me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's great. No, my daughter Carol, she's a second reader. She's uh -huh. had two years in and now they can go to three years and then they have to get out for a year and then Oh. Yeah. But uh that's good. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on, Kane. I need this when I get <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I get stiff. That. I get it stiff by sitting too long. Oh yeah. Oh well, sure. But I was to the doctor the other day, and he took one more pill away from me. So uh -huh. one at a time, I got one little, one little pill for blood and one for water. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and, I, and I say it's, they say sometimes, see how this swells up here? Yeah, yeah. That that means there's water in it. So I got a little pill. I have to take that. Yeah. So four pills a day now I take. No, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, four pills a day. It was uh -huh. five. Yeah. But he's a good doctor. He's a heart doctor. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a Polish. Oh really? You aren't Polish, are you? No. <laughs> so I was I was, I was, going, to, I was going to say uh, I was going to tell him that something about a Polak. Polak. Oh, oh, yeah. I was going to say how many light bulbs can you take? <laughs> but I said no, you better not. He's, one of these I will because he's real nice. Guy. Oh, I see.